heart disease because it's our number one killer. And what if you're on blood pressure medication and it's not really working or cholesterol medication or any kind of medication that has to do with your heart that isn't working, including um, ED medication because that has to do with your circulatory system. So it turns out that there is a good percentage of people that get on these medications and they're just not working for them. And maybe you know somebody like that and they get additional meds and try different things. And so why is that? So let's, let's go back to our friend nitric oxide. It's, it's very interesting because it um, starts as nitrate, which you get in foods, and I'm gonna go over those foods um, and also lifestyle habits that increase the nitrate, and then um, the nitrate gets gets uh, tra uh, transformed into nitrite. Uh, this happens in the mouth, so we talked last week about the dangers of mouthwash. We're also going to get into some uh, oral bacteria that can be a problem, so it's very important. And then you swallow your saliva, gets down in the stomach, and um, let's see, hello, hello, Mercy. Um, and then what happens, it gets in the stomach, and uh, you turn the nitrite into this gas called nitric oxide. So it happens in, in your stomach, it happens in the vessels of your uh, body, your, your circulatory vessels, your arteries. And so what's so important about it, and by the way, how long does it last? So it's, it's a gas. So by the time you make nitric oxide itself, it's a gas and it lasts less than a second. So you might think, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do with something that only lasts less than a second? But it doesn't need to last long because it just, boop, it starts the cascade of functions. It's called a signaling cascade that then leads to all these different um, products that your body uh, engages in that affects all of your cells. And, it, and it's, a, it's quite the amazing substance. There's been hundreds of thousands of articles. Um, a, a Nobel Prize was awarded for the research in nitric oxide. So some of the researchers have been doing this for decades and decades and just keep finding out more about it. And of course, because of, because of gas, there's people that are working on either medications or supplements to, to increase it because it does decrease with age, um, but it also decreases with not enough sleep and not enough exercise and not enough sunlight and not enough green leafy vegetables. So all, all the things that we talk about so often can really decrease this nitric oxide. And if you don't have it in the endothelium, so we're gonna focus on that right now, which is the cells that line the vessels that carry your blood. If, you, if you're not making nitric oxide, you are creating inflammation and you're creating plaque. And what we know with our number one killer, heart disease and stroke, it comes from inflammation in the vessels and then plaque buildup. And so by virtue of understanding what nitric oxide does, which is it prevents that inflammation, it counters the inflammation and it counters the plaque, it would very much behoove us to make more nitric oxide. And you know, just because you make less with age doesn't mean you can't counter that with, with you know, working, working harder uh, with the sources of nitric oxide. And also not you know, unknowingly, unwittingly doing things that decrease it. So, Last week we talked about mouthwash, completely destroys um, the ability. Uh, unfortunately, PPIs or antacid medication, which millions of Americans are taking. So that's a big one. Uh, if you follow the channel at all, you know I do a lot with hiatal hernia syndrome. Here at Root Cause, we find it quite easy to get people off their antacids naturally. We're not replacing with another drug. We're just getting to the root cause of why the stomach is spasming and bringing the acid up the esophagus. So um, not to go off into that, but when I discovered with, you know, I've been just sort of on this nitric oxide adventure of late. And when I, when I discovered this um, evidence about antacids destroying your ability to make nitric oxide, it was like, Okay, here's another reason. You know, there's so many important reasons to get off antacids, but this is a critical one. And just to touch upon uh, ED, they, a lot of the researchers uh, were talking and they were saying ED for men and women. And I'm like, huh, I had never heard of ED for women. So obviously, 
uh, women, we have a clitoris, men have a penis, so it's maybe more obvious when a man has erectile dysfunction. But just the very nature of bringing blood into the area, engorging that area with blood, both men and women both need to do that for sexual satisfaction. So without nitric oxide, you're not doing that well either. And a lot of times it's been noted that a man having some issues with ED is, is the harbinger, it's sort of the little canary in the coal mine letting you know that um, you're on your way to heart disease, potentially heart disease, heart attack, stroke, um, because that's a very small artery and it sort of shows problems sooner than you might see in a vessel or actually having a heart attack itself. Um, so same thing with women, it's quite fascinating. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about um, the foods that are good. So they talk about uh, dark green leafy vegetables, but it wasn't all dark green. So there was spinach and arugula and red leaf lettuce and broccoli, so that was the dark green uh, category. But then radishes were in there and so was carrots and bok choy and eggplant. Um, a lot of fun foods and celery. So uh, they're not all dark green leafies, but apparently, oh, beets. Number one was red beets. So I've been getting jarred red beets and they're actually quite delicious and I've been just throwing them on salads, etc. But yeah, so if you like dark beets, they're, they're a, a bit of a thing to cook beets, I would, and I love to cook, but you can get them in a jar and they're, you know, don't have any bad ingredients and, and enjoy them that way. So uh, in addition, so we talked about what to eat, we talked about good sleep, exercise, getting sunlight. What else was on my list? That was it. So the basics, keeping the basics in, but also then just not compromising unwittingly your ability to make this very important gas that lasts less than a second, but that's all, that's all it needs to do its great work. So in the next few days, I'm gonna be talking about more of how uh, nitric oxide affects your body and also other things that you can make sure you're not doing to compromise its function. And then I'll, I'll end up with some exciting news about supplements and the, the drugs are on the horizon. I, they've been trying to make drugs for this for, I don't know, 20 some odd years um, unsuccessfully. So that might be a bit, and I'm not a fan of meds. <laughs> I like the more natural uh, methodology. So, but if you know anybody, especially in this area, because the thing I mentioned last week, but I didn't touch upon today, when you're talking about circulation and you're talking about protection of your blood vessels, of course you're ta talking about high blood pressure, um, and you're also talking about cognitive health as far as Alzheimer's disease, uh, dementia, um, poor memory, etc. So it affects the brain as well. So I hope you found this interesting. If you did, please give the channel a thumbs up and subscribe, tell your friends, and I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you found this video helpful. If you want more on this topic and others, click here.